Hello, and welcome to Spur Economics. In this video, we will discuss the price effect and its decomposition into income and substitution effects for normal goods using the Hicks and Slutsky methods. The change in quantity demanded due to a change in relative price of the commodity is called the substitution effect. For example, as the price of a commodity falls, it becomes cheaper in comparison to other related commodities. Therefore, consumers will buy more of the commodity as it is relatively cheaper compared to other goods that are expensive. This substitution effect is always positive, but its magnitude depends on the nature and type of commodity. Income effect is the change in the quantity demanded of a commodity due to a change in the real income of a consumer. For example, with a fall in the price of a commodity, purchasing power of the consumer increases. He or she can buy the same quantity of commodity with less income spent. In the case of normal goods, the income effect is positive as the quantity demanded of commodity increases with an increase in income. However, the income effect is negative for inferior goods because consumers prefer to buy other goods as their real income rises. Price effect can be defined as the change in quantity demanded of a commodity as a result of a change in its price. This change in quantity demanded takes place through the substitution effect and income effect simultaneously. Therefore, the price effect is the combination of both the income and substitution effects. The substitution effect is always positive, however, the income effect can be positive or negative. Therefore, the price effect can be positive or negative depending on the direction and magnitude of both substitution and income effects. Income and substitution effects cannot be observed directly because only the overall price effect is observable in the end. Price effect needs to be decomposed into income and substitution effects to study their magnitude and direction. To separate the substitution effect from the income effect, the real income of the consumer has to be made constant. In other words, the income effect can be negated by returning the real income of consumers back to the level before the price change. In this way, the change in quantity demanded will reflect only the substitution effect because the income effect will be eliminated. After obtaining the substitution effect, the difference between the price effect and the substitution effect shows the magnitude of the income effect. For normal goods, the overall price effect is positive because both the income and substitution effects are positive. Other way to interpret this is that if the price, income, and substitution effects are positive, we know that we are dealing with a normal good. First, we will illustrate the Hicks method of decomposing the price effect. Let us take a look at the diagram shown here. The consumer is at equilibrium at point E1 initially. We consider the quantity demanded of our normal good B on the x-axis and the quantity demanded of another normal good A on the y-axis. As the price of normal good B on x-axis decreases, the budget line rotates from xy to xc. The new equilibrium point is at E2 where the new budget line XC is tangent to the new indifference curve I2. The new budget line and indifference curve could be anywhere depending on the magnitude of price change and price effect. In this diagram, the change in quantity demanded of B due to a fall in the price of our normal good B is the difference between B1 and B2. This represents the price effect. To decompose this price effect, the increase in real income due to a fall in the price of our good B must be offset by eliminating the income effect. According to Hicks, income level must be reduced in such a manner that the consumer returns to the original level of utility. The budget line needs to be shifted back in order to return the consumer to the original indifference curve. The new budget line must be tangent to the original indifference curve. The income effect will be eliminated because the budget line is shifted back. As a result, the visible change in quantity demanded will be due to the substitution effect only. To reduce the income level based on the Hicks method, the budget line is shifted parallelly from XC to PQ. The magnitude of this shift, or the income to be offset, is such that the consumer is back on the original indifference curve I1. The budget lined PQ is tangent to I1. 
Therefore, the consumer is at equilibrium at a new point E3 which is on the original indifference curve, but is associated with a new budget-lined PQ. The quantity demanded of B at this point is B3. The difference between B1 and B3 is the substitution effect because the income effect has been offset as a result of the shift in the budget line. Therefore, the change in quantity demanded from B1 to B3 occurs only due to the substitution effect. The income effect can be obtained by subtracting the substitution effect from the price effect, which will be equal to the difference between B2 and B3. Now, let us illustrate the Slutsky method of decomposing price effect. Again, the consumer is at equilibrium at point E1 initially. As the price of normal good B on x-axis decreases, the budget line rotates from xy to xc. The new equilibrium point is at E2 where the new budget line xc is tangent to the new indifference curve I2. The change in quantity demanded of B due to a fall in the price of our normal good B is the difference between B1 and B2. This represents the price effect. Slutsky suggested a different approach where income level must be reduced in such a manner that the consumer is back to purchasing the original quantity of goods when there was no price change. The shifted budget line must pass through the original equilibrium point. On the new budget line, the consumer will be at equilibrium on an indifference curve that gives higher utility. The quantity demanded of a commodity at this point will represent the substitution effect because the income effect will be eliminated. In the Slutsky method, the income effect is eliminated by shifting the budget line xy to the left in such a way that the consumer returns to the same quantity demanded of the commodity as before the price change. The budget line is shifted to PQ and it passes through the original equilibrium point E1. Because the price of the commodity has decreased, the consumer will not be at equilibrium at E1. Instead, the consumer will maximize utility at the point where the budget line PQ is tangent to a new indifference curve I3. At this new equilibrium point E3, the quantity demanded of B is equal to B3. Since the income effect has been offset at this point, the change in quantity demanded is purely due to the substitution effect. The magnitude of the substitution effect is, therefore, the difference between B1 and B3. Similarly, the remaining effect is the income effect, which is represented by the difference between B2 and B3. Thank you for watching and happy learning!